Oh, he's trying. Look at him try. Look at him try. Look at him try. Oh god. I think you might be dying. Oh my god. <laughs> and welcome back. I'm Jackie. And I'm Sam. And today we are checking Ted Lasso season two, episodes three and four off the Shameless. Yay! Hooray for the Lasso way! <laughs> Excited. If you're new here, welcome. Our typical format for these videos is that one of us has seen this and one of us hasn't. So Sam will be giving us the reaction portion of today and I will be acting as guide and trivia master. She's very good at it. It's very entertaining to watch her be <laughs> very funny. Well, it's very entertaining for me to watch him react, so everybody's entertained. Yay Ide for entertainment. Ideally, hopefully, right? Anyway, the first episode we're watching today, episode three, is called Do the Rightest Thing. Hmm. Any thoughts? Well, usually I would say that this was some sort of like, almost like a political thing, mm -hmm. right? Because it's just part of the modern day culture right now is that we're all very political. Um, That's a thing. And uh, that they would be right, like conservative, like something on, on that side of the thing. Also oh, like right wing. Yeah, like right wing. Oh, um, okay. But this is Ted Lasso. Mm -hmm. And I have learned through a season and two episodes that uh, Ted Lasso does not usually play into my um, suspicious natures and thoughts. <laughs> so in this instance, the rightest thing, I'm gonna go with like doing the right thing, mm -hmm. but it's not just doing the right thing, it's like doing the rightest thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's not good, it's not better, it's bestest. It's an excellent take. It's my guess. <laughs> and I'm, I'm almost positive that I'm right on this one, mm -hmm. mostly because I've been wrong about so many other ones. Mathematically, I gotta get one in at some point. Statistically, exactly. you gotta get one. Well, Ted Lasso does like to have a little bit of fun with their episode titles, yes. and there is a movie, if you've never seen it, called Do the Right Thing. Oh. It is Spike Lee, I believe, directed it. It was the late 90s, early 2000s, something like that. And it is a commentary on race and race tension and racial violence and this idea of doing the right thing in that situation. God, Spike Lee is so good. Yeah. So good. If you haven't seen that film, absolutely excellent. Very topical for yes. pretty much any era, actually, remarkably. <laughs> <laughs> um, but could potentially be a reference here since they Ooh. do sort of enjoy their, their tongue-in-cheek titles. Yes, yes, they do. Okay, so that's cool. Cool. All right, I'll be in. I'll be prepped and ready to give that a shot. Sounds good. Am I right? Am I wrong? Am I right? Am I wrong? I need to know. I need to know. Sam doesn't do well with delayed gratification. <laughs> Why would I delay my gratification when I can have it now and then more later? But can you have it now? I will as soon as you stop talking. So I'm just gonna ramble on for a little while longer. It's um, the worst. How about them <laughs> Mets? <laughs> well, if you haven't, by all means, please give us a like, drop us a comment. We love hearing what you guys have to say. And as always, redder is better. <laughs> so hit the big red subscribe button. You should do that, right? Yeah. Right. There. It's like right over there, big red one. Can't miss it. Everybody loves hitting big red buttons. That is true. Why wouldn't you do it? Yes, that's true. <laughs> Are you wearing a t-shirt? I am wearing a t-shirt. Boss ass bitch. Well, they do say dress for the job you want, so. This is true. This will make sense. A little bit more sense. Oh, is this a reference? Maybe. Uh, her and her references, man. She loves <laughs> them references. Enjoy this, though, because this is probably one of the only times you'll see me in a t-shirt. In public, anyway. No. Yeah, and on this channel. But this is this is a very special moment. <laughs> wow. I feel blessed to be here for this. You should. You should. <gasps> That's a white t-shirt, too. <gasps> Let's have a wet t-shirt contest. Let's not. All right, fine. <laughs> Kill my vibe. Yeah. Gladly. All the time. <laughs> And that, that vibe killing, that's why you're the pretty one. And he's the funny one. So funny. <laughs> and this is Ted Lasso, season two, episode three, Do the Rightest Thing. Here comes the biscuits train. Choo choo. <gasps> Sassy Spur. Mom <What>? from mine. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> All right. In all honesty, that's a great way to greet a one night stand. True. It's like the most positive way to like see your one night stand again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ideally, you want it to be a positive experience. You would hope. You would hope. You would hope. You especially wouldn't want to meet one of your one night stands at Disneyland when he was there with his family, his wife, and his three kids, and his mother in law. Oh, that's like a very specific scenario. Uh, yes, who's the new receptionist? Oh, that's Nora, my daughter. Oh, okay. Oh. Wait. Is she mine? It's 
a legitimate fear. And if memory serves, you finished on. <gasps> Where did he finish? Sam needs to know. I need to know. Nobody else does, but Sam needs to know. I need to know. Oh my God. Now I'm having all sorts of visions of where Ted Lasso would. Moving on. Did he talk like that? The whole time. <laughs> and so eager to please. <gasps> it was fabulous. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that could turn her off from this game. Mm, then again, yeah. I mean, it's just. It's weird. That's it. yep. mm. it's, it's not our business. It's fine. Let's go all Pat Benatar on me, yeah? And hit you with my best shot. Fire away. Yes. So they've adopted him. Aww. They love him now. They've all, He's rubbed off on all of them. This angry press that at the beginning of the first season. I like how I like how now it's it's a reference thing. And I like mm -hmm. how it's not quick references. It's, it's like full on like. Mm -hmm. References, references. Yep. And they're all happy about it. Oh my god. <laughs> well, it's cool. When you when you finally get someone's jokes, mm -hmm. like, even if it's not someone that you're super fond of, it's like, oh my god, I get it! I understood that reference. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, I get that reference! I understood that reference. You know, think of me as his own personal Mr. Miyagi, except without all that extra yard work. I mean, to be fair, Jamie could probably do with some character building yard work. I don't get that reference. You won't understand. I do. The Karate Kid. Mr. Miyagi. Oh, Cobra Kai. <laughs> Scott Baio? And what's his face, the blonde dude? Okay, I, I sense some hostility here. I don't really care. I don't Can watch. Can we please internet bully him into watching the Karate Kid, please? please or, please. or, 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 or the internet could just bully you. No. Okay. Fine. This this is equal opportunity bullying here. <laughs> it is from the Karate Kid. It is a very iconic '80s film that Cobra Kai is a reboot of. I know the basis of the Karate Kid. It's just. The only like modern reference I have for the Karate Kid is it's that show Cobra Kai is based off of, and it's about the it's about them as old men trying to relive their glory. I assume. I assume. It's a little bit more complicated than that. Sure. And Cobra Kai actually, I was really impressed. I was pleasantly surprised by how good it was. Um, but yes, Karate Kid is a very iconic film that many, many, many things reference, including Ted Lasso. And now we have to watch it. Do we? I'm not opposed. It's a great movie. Sure. Why were your kid on the plane? <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way they know he's a footballer. Oh, no. Uh. It would really help draw some traction if there was some young hot footballers on there. I like her, I like her dress. Mm -hmm. And I like how she seems to have, like, I like how she's kept the pony. Mm -hmm. and it's still Keely. She's still got the earrings. But, like, I remember the first few episodes of her in the first season and mm -hmm. she dressed more like a footballer's girlfriend. Yeah. And now she's dressing like a boss ass bitch. She is, but Ooh. she's... Um, but she's still her. Yeah. That's the fun thing is you can see her wardrobe has evolved. She's a little bit more professional yeah. looking now. But it's still bright and colorful. It's still fun. It's still Keely. Yeah. yeah. No, I like it. Yeah. It's cute. Uh, well, uh, what was the name again? Banta. B-A-N-T-R. Oh, like Grinder. Yes, sweetie. Just like Grinder. You called me a jaundiced worm. Ooh. Right, yeah, I'm sorry about that, Colin. In a profile for my hometown paper. You hit on my mum in front of my dad. Please tell your father I'm sorry. Um, and give Janet my best, yeah? <laughs> Calls her by her first name. I love how each thing, like, you have the thing that he did and then the thing that makes it worse. Because it's like, you called me a jaundiced worm. That's bad. In a profile for my hometown paper, it gets worse. That's worse. And then there's, you hit on my mom. That's bad. In front of my dad. It that's, gets worse. That's worse. Yeah. <laughs> Every single thing just gets worse. Oh my god. So great. You got us renegade, mate. There's that. There is that. Yeah. That's the root of the issue. I don't know you, but I don't like you. <laughs> the Dutchman is yeah. so mean and I love it. Oh, and I look at Sam's face. I love how Sam is just like, like mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I kind of saw this coming. Mm -hmm. Come on. Told you so. Yep. I'll get the bill. <laughs> then you're coming back, right? Yes, why? Oh, just making sure you're not going to disappear for another six years. <gasps> Burn! I'm joking. <laughs> Burn! What? Oh, oh. 
Dr. Sharon Fieldstone was watching. Mm -hmm. Talk to Sharon Bravestone. Bravestone, that's right. <laughs> Dr. Bravestone. So hey, we're gonna start you out on the reserve squad, all right? No problem, coach, yeah. Figured it'd be good for the fellas to see you earn your spot back. Smart. Yeah. Nothing more likable than watching somebody humbly overcome adversity with their effortless goal given talent. And yet it doesn't sound so genuine coming from his mouth. When you say it like that, <laughs> it stops being in stops being fun to watch. Yeah. Hey, you think you heard me? I do. Think you gonna listen to me? I do not. <laughs> Beard knows what's up. They are going to kill him. <laughs> I love how Nate is taking such pleasure out of Jamie's suffering. Uh, uh, isn't there a word for that? Schmigadoon. That was your worst one yet. Um, Shugelhorn? Come on, you have to at least have like... Smack and four line. There we go. It's got to at least bear some sort of resemblance. Like at least the, yes, it, it the matches, main sounds It matches the it. cadence correctly. Yes, yes I understand. Go. Yes. There you go. Schadenfreude. That one. Oh my. <laughs> oh, poor Dr. Bravestone taking her notes. <laughs> oh, he's got a red one. Oh. Richmond color. Actually, though, when Apple does red on a device, they give a percentage of their donation to the, I think it's the Red Foundation, which helps, is it HIV in oh. Africa? Like, it's a very yeah. specific thing. They only do it for certain iterations of their oh, devices okay. because it's a charitable thing. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, Apple. Huh. Oof. Oof. That's hard yeah. when your dad is like, hey, this cool thing that you were really excited about, uh, big no-no. Yeah. That's hard. Well, especially for someone like Sam, who we've established has a very strong moral compass and cares um, about doing the right thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, hey, do the right thing. Oh! Yeah. Oh! Hey, here we go. Here we go. The cogs are spinning. <laughs> There is from the modern line. Her parents were cancelled. So that makes her an orphan? That's not how cancel culture works. What, so now you just get a bunch of unsolicited descriptions of dicks? <laughs> wow, she really loves you. I oh, know, it's fucking annoying. <laughs> Do you want to come to my podiatrist appointment later? Yes, please. Oh my She's god. so excited. Oh my god. And that's actually really good advice, too. Mm -hmm. Like, it's true. I remember being a kid, and there was nothing more fun to me than being able to go into the office with my mom mm -hmm. and just chill in my mom's office while she worked because I thought it was the coolest thing. Well, you feel so grown up, and when you're a kid, you're just like, oh, this is awesome, and you don't realize that it's actually the most boring thing on the planet. But you're a kid, so you don't know. Yeah, no, you're not concerned about taxes or paycheck or car payments or house payments or food payments or gas payments or clothes or self-conscious about your looks. Your coworkers, office politics. I'll stop. I'm gonna stop. I'm depressing myself now. Oh, being a grown up is hard. Can we go back to Ted Lasso, please? Would you want to come to work with me for like the whole day and just join me for meetings and stuff? It could be tremendously boring. That would be amazing. Oh. Yeah, I've always wanted to see what it's like to run a football club. Really? Since when? Ever since you started doing it. Aww. That's so nice. That's really sweet. That's so awesome. And it just warmed her heart. Oh. God, she's such a stone cold oh, fox. No. And uh, Miss Welton, I received your email, and once again, your suggestion fixed everything. I mean, brilliant as always. <laughs> I love Higgins. I love him so much. MVP. He's just the best. Yeah. Uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> Just trying to make you look good. <laughs> you blew that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, looking for a lady, eh? Oh, God, no, no. Uh, I deleted it immediately. <laughs> At least he downloaded it. Mm -hmm. That's a step forward. Mm -hmm. Very picky when it comes to women. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for glances. But women are pretty picky, too. <laughs> Boy, what if I did get on there and I met my soulmate and it changed the whole course of my life? That'd be pretty neat -o. yeah? I love the first thing he thinks about when downloading a dating app is finding his soulmate and having it change the course of his life because that never ever actually happens, except it does sometimes and it's amazing when it happens, but that doesn't happen to normal people. But Ted Lasso was not a normal person. No. Too cute. 
No, too pure. That's Ted. Ooh, so if she found out that you downloaded a dating app, she would destroy my phone with pliers and a blowtorch. Wow. Thorough. We can respect that. You know what we gotta do? Get Dr. Sharon. What? No. Y yes. I think it's time for these young fellas to meet oh. that guy. What? They don't need to meet that guy. They don't. Nobody does. <laughs> don't worry, coach. It's gonna be great. What is happening? Like, what is going on? I trust Beard more than I trust anyone else, so, like, what is this? Fair. Who's that guy? Led Tasso. Okay, sure. Let's just strap ourselves in. Just, like, hook and hook and just... just, just. All right, let's go. We good? It's ready for this ride, this right. wild, ridiculous ride. So our players have contracts that were signed when we were a premiership club, but our current income is that of a championship club, which means... You're paying premiership rates for championship players, so financially the club's a bit fucked. Sorry. She got it quicker than Ted did. <laughs> Somebody actually pointed out in the comments of, I believe, the last video, on average, a relegated team that goes from the Premier League to the Championship League is expected to lose about 25 million. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my That's God. That's like low estimate is how much you're expected to lose in income annually. Ooh. So you, you don't want to be operating out, outside your means. Oh my God. That's in the red. That's in the deep reds. That's yeah. in the maroons. Yeah. That, that's what's happening right now. Ooh. Yeah. Sam, how nice to see you. I apologize for interrupting. No, oh, please. Sam, this is my goddaughter, Nora. Nora, this is Sam. Sam Obisania. <gasps> Aww, she's got a crush on Sam. Yep. Then I mean, again. how could you not? Seriously, though. Yeah. Hi, Sam Obisania. Oh, oh yes, yes. You, you guys used to watch Frozen together. It's a beautiful metaphor for many of life's journeys, especially puberty. That's what she wants to hear. He associates her with puberty. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh god, that's crushing. I'm a little devastated hearing that. Oh, poor girl. Oh god. <laughs> I would like to pull out of my campaign with Dubai Air. Well, it has come to my attention that Dubai Air's parent company, Cerithium Oil, is destroying Nigeria's environment and at the same time bribing government officials to look the other way. I can't be the face of one of their subsidiaries. Hell yeah. Of course you don't have to do it, Sam. We'll take care of it. Aww. Aww. See, usually in real life, this would be a big deal and they wouldn't let him do that because this is TV, it's great. And like, this is how it should work, right? Yeah. This really is how this conversation should go. It's yeah. not a, but the money. Yeah. Well, it's in line with their characters. It fits the tone of the show, but he has a perfectly valid reason. And that's something that should be listened to more often than it is. Heck yeah. The CEO of Cerithium Oil is an old friend of Rupert's. Perhaps he'll still find me charming. I mean, we all do, so. Heck yeah, man. No. No. No, I already hate it. <laughs> I already hate this. Oh, God. Strap in, folks. Oh, God. It's the anti Ted. <gasps> Beard's face is just like, here we go. Here we go. He's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm locking down, I'm fortifying, I'm ready. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be difficult for me to get through. I don't, I don't do well with stuff like this. It's hard for me to watch, man. Ted, you know, it's gone for now. <laughs> <laughs> now start touching your toes. Touch your toes. Those are your feet fingers. <laughs> it's so hard because, really, it's so hard to take any man seriously when he says feet fingers. <laughs> He's not wrong. He's not wrong, technically, but still, I'm, but it's Ted, La I know, I know. It, I'm it's just... the angry version of Ted. Like, I know. It is, it is him taking the charming folksy things he would normally say and- Make them angry. Make them angry. Look at his stance. He's trying so hard. He's committed. And then what, you start caressing it and playing with like little air hole nuts. What is happening? Yeah, messing around with that, making out with I... it, making it your girlfriend, is that what you want to do? I... Then what, he asked you to marry you? What just happened? What is going on? What is this? I love it. It's awful. Jason Sudeikis unleashed. Oh my God. Everything. Oh my God, this is wild. It's so much fun though. It was like a whole monologue. Yeah, you gonna look like one of them trees from a, from a Tim Burton movie. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what? I can't, I'm having a difficult time 
like literally processing this. I mean, I get the point, right? Mm -hmm. The point is to make himself a villain mm -hmm. because if he's a villain, then Jamie can't be the villain and then they can all just go back to being teeny. But also, this is a weird way of going about it. This is weird. Ted is not known for his convention. Oh, right, right. That's true. Yeah. That's super true. Even Dumbo! Oh, that's right. Even friggin' Dumbo. Oh, that's right, he's a Dumbo. Yeah, we don't talk about it. What's the matter, O'Brien? Your butt still hurt? He tore his butt last season. Oh, his upper hamstring, for God's <laughs> sakes. <laughs> Even Beard wrote torn butt. Beard knows what's up. How long was I at? <laughs> like some sort of disassociative state. Yep. Just like split personality. Just clap on, clap off. Yep. Yep. Love it. Yep. Okay, we could release Sam, which we're not gonna do. Or we can tell the CEO of our biggest sponsor to piss off, which I doubt we can do. It's interesting. No, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna say this later. Okay. Yeah, this is just like the time I got in trouble for chewing gum in the bathroom. You got in trouble for chewing gum? No, I was smoking, but I don't want to lecture. I'll allow it, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Point is, Aunt Stinky, sometimes you have to do the right thing, even if you lose. Yes, yes you do. That's good advice. Mm -hmm. You're just really fucking me, Ed. Walk with me. Come on. I mean, if they want to be little bitches. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you right now that that probably is not the way to go about things. Yeah, you maybe shouldn't call people that you want to like you little bitches. It's like they're holding on to some silly grudge. I mean, it's not my fault I'm special. This man. <gasps> Amy, this is Dr. Fieldstone. She's a brilliant therapist, and unlike me, she actually gets paid to listen to you complain. I love how Keely knew exactly what to do. Yep. Because sometimes it really is more appropriate for your friends to be talking to a professional. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is one of those times. Yep. So what? Do I just sit here and blabber on and on about myself? Basically. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I love how he was, he was really awkward and very uncomfortable yep. right up until he nailed exactly what he's supposed to do and then he's like, oh, oh cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, dickhole. Dear Richard Cole. You creepy old pedo. My old friend. Sam isn't going anywhere, arsehole. <laughs> I have decided not to release Sam Obisanya. Sincerely. Boss ass bitch. Sincerely, boss ass bitch. Oh! Oh! I get it now! Yep. Oh! Well, there's a second reason. If you guys watched to the very end of our season one finale video, we posed the question Which one of us do you think is more Ted? Which one is more Beard? And vice versa, which one of us is more Rebecca? And which one of us is more Keely? Now, neither of us have been particularly subtle about who we connect with and who we want to be, slash be friends with, slash be Dang. on. Um, <laughs> and someone left a very, very, very kind, life-affirming comment for me saying, <laughs> Sorry. Quote, yes, Jackie, you are a boss-ass bitch. Aww. It just made me feel good. Wait, does this mean I'm more like Juno Temple? <gasps> I would say we did get, actually get a comment like that, that someone said they feel that you're more Keely and I'm more Rebecca. That's the nicest thing anyone has said to me in regards to Ted Lasso. <laughs> oh, thank you all. It was very, very sweet, but it seemed appropriate to um, ring in the episode. Love it. With the t-shirt. Love it. Yep. Welcome to Soccer Saturday. We have a massive afternoon of action for you today. I love <gasps> That's right. Harry Hardbody's on TV now. Yes, yes. he is. I love that the need for alliteration trumps the need to say football over soccer in England. Oh my God. Why wouldn't they just call it Football Friday? Because it's on Saturdays. The games are on Saturdays. Oh, oh, yep. oh. Wait, did they not play games on the weekdays? I don't know, but this particular show- Is on Saturday. Is on Saturdays. Cool. So they had to call it Soccer Saturday. <laughs> A man who's coached seemingly every club in England, including yours, George Cartrick. Because he got fired from all of them. I was about to say, being passed around like that is not a positive thing in this scenario. 
the ex-Manchester City starlet and lust conquers all reject has his first match back with Richmond. Any thoughts, Roy? All right, I'm gonna give it five. I'm gonna give five cuss words. Just five. All right. Just five? Just five. That's the number. Let's see. Jamie Tart is a muppet, and I hope he dies of the incurable condition of being a little bitch. One. Don't hold uh. back, Roy. Yeah, come on. Tell us how you really feel. OK. You're a shit manager. Two. Not about me, you twat. Language <laughs> boys. Well, he asked for it. He did ask for it. Damn! Well, still, I'm glad that it was under five. He is on TV. He is on TV, but that line, I hope he dies of the incurable condition of being a little bitch. God, that meme, it's, it's, it's a gif. Like, it's definitely one of the best ones from this show. Really? Yeah. Huh. Well, there are very specific contexts in which it's used that we'll, we'll get into later. Sure. Fancy horrifying, is it? I'm going to insult something and then try it because I'm a good friend. Friendship. It's actually how this YouTube channel got started. Is <laughs> she asked me, I insulted her, and then we started doing it. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. That is how friendship works. <laughs> In case anyone was wondering. Fair. <laughs> Ooh, a statement. I like it. Mm. He's doing the right thing. Yeah. Give me the tape, bro. That's why he's captain. Aww. Want me to tape? Retainment work. Aww. Gotta wear the same kit. Aww. That's a nice moment. It was really well done because it's the first genuine thing he's done. Mm -hmm. But he does it right. It's not, I'm doing it to pander. It's not, I'm doing it because I'm trying to make them like me. He's doing it because it's the right thing to do. And by yeah. saying, we are a team, he's yeah. for the first time putting the team before himself. Yeah. No. It's nice. It's a good moment. And it was well made. Yeah. It's an excellent moment of growth. I've never needed to have that kind of courage. Because, well, honestly, when bad things happen to uh, people like me, y'all have a tendency to write about it without even being asked. The same had to go and get y'all's attention. Yeah. We respect a self-aware Ted. Are you openly accusing the Nigerian government of corruption? Yes, I am. Love it. Love it. Yep. I just hope the rest of the team is not upset with me. One minute later. We are celebrating! But we lost. Yeah, but we broke the tie streak. <laughs> there is a silver lining to every cloud. Yes, yes, there is. <laughs> a toast to Sam, who did something incredible tonight. Little Nigerian prick stole my thunder. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously. To Sam. Oh, to Sam! Aw, oh, it's a nice moment. Mm -hmm. Good to have you back. Yeah, it's good to be back, bro. It's a great, genuine moment. And again, going back to Jamie, putting the team first and putting someone else first, the entire build-up to this was, the story is that Jamie's back. Yeah. Everybody's talking, everybody's asking, what's it gonna be, Jamie's back, Jamie's back, how yeah. is it gonna go, everything is about him. And old Jamie would have run with that, yeah. would have made it all about him, would have completely overshadowed the obviously more important issue. And yeah. there's a lot we could comment on about race there, but I think that speaks for itself. Yeah. But the fact that he learned to put himself aside, put the team first, put yeah. someone else and something else that was more important first, it resonated. And someone like Sam is going to recognize that. And that's why in this moment, he's on Jamie's side again. Yeah. No. Oh, growth. And Jamie's joke about, hey, he stole my thunder. That's how you were a teammate. Yes. Yeah, because yes. there, there has to be a genuine trust there. Yeah. yeah. Could Nora get a picture, please? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Hey, guys, guys, we're going to take a picture for Nora. Oh, yeah. oh, that's so sweet. That's so cute. That's too cute. Oi! Hide your beard! <laughs> She's such good PR. Yep. That's great. Yep. That's cute. Oh, oh it's over. Yeah. Oh. So, that was cute. So I don't have that exact picture, but there is a team photo that they took that went with the, um, when you're a member of like the Screen Actors Guild and the Academy, for like, the Academy Awards and stuff, mm. you get copies of things. They're mm. called For Your Consideration copies. Mm. And it's because they want you to vote. And yes. so they'll send packages with things and sometimes they'll include little gifts and things like that. Oh, how cute. And for the Ted Lasso one, they had a team photo oh, how cute. in it and I still have it. Oh, how so that was Do the Rightest Thing. I, it's such a cute show and it's so full of like, this is 
these are the kind of things that you love TV for is mm -hmm. because they, they get to do the things that for some really messed up reason don't happen in real life, even though they should, even yeah. though they really should. Yeah. But yeah. Well, the nice thing about Ted Lasso, and this is very in character with the show, and it's why this episode, even though it's a slightly different subject matter yeah. than we've had the rest of the show, it doesn't feel pandering. Yeah. Because, unfortunately, representation of anything, whether that's race, uh, gender, class, sexuality, can often feel really pandering because it feels like it's put in for the sake of having it there, not because it fits organically and not because they're actually trying to do something right. Yeah. It's just, well, we have to tick this box. Yep. And this at no point ever felt like that. Yeah. It felt organic and it felt like they were literally trying to do the right thing. Yeah. And it fit the tone of the show. And so that's why watching something like this is not uncomfortable. You don't roll your eyes and go like, oh, of course they're doing representation. Yeah. It feels genuine and organic and you care about it because it's done right. What I enjoyed about it was the fact that it was seamlessly done. Mm -hmm. Topically wise, like mm -hmm. you didn't really see, oh, at, at the beginning, at the top of the episode when Sam gets his Dubai air contract, mm -hmm. it's great, it's this big moment, we associate this with positive feelings. Yep. And then the downfall comes from his dad, who he is very close to, who we know is back home. It's very like, personal to him. It is, and it has this flow to it that is how you know that they're not checking off boxes because they clearly put the same amount of time and effort into mm -hmm. doing this that they would do anything else, and that's yeah. how you know that it isn't pandering. Yeah. It's because it's got time, care, and consideration been yes. put into it. There's development to it. It not only fits the tone of the show, but it actually helps to advance the characters. Like, yeah. this didn't feel like a filler episode if we have to put this in here. The whole scenario fit what was happening with the club yep. because them upsetting a sponsor they're doing that in the midst of a financial crisis yeah like they're acknowledging they're running in the red right now yeah they are they don't have the money they need and they just upset one of their biggest sponsors that yeah. was a huge risk to take and so it fit what was happening with the club but it also gave opportunities for us to see more of sam and his family and yep. the fact that he will always do the right thing but it gave jamie an opportunity to grow and yep. so it was not we're inserting this to check a box it it, it grew the show yeah. in the best way. Yeah, no, yeah. this is well done. So yeah. I'm, I'm excited for our next episode. Yeah. Although I'm less excited for our next episode because it's the Christmas episode. That's right, it is the Christmas episode. Oh. Um, we did not dress on theme for this one, unfortunately, but you know, Christmas in July. It's yes, like, yeah. yeah, Christmas in July. Yeah. We got red lips, we got a green background. Ha, there it is, ha, ha, ha. We got our red, we got our green. And speaking of red, redder is better, click the big red button. <sighs> All right, so let's get into season two, episode four, Carol of the Bells. Christmas episode. Christmas episode. Bumbercash, did you make this? Yeah, man, knitting soothes me. <gasps> Oh my god, he knitted a scarf. I love that. Knitting yeah. suits me. Soothes. Oh, soothes. Yeah, knitting better. soothes me. That's better. And true. Yeah. Knitting is very soothing. Yeah. Oh, that's too dope. That's too dope. I don't even have anything to say. I just needed a pause to appreciate it. It's just so dope. He yep. looks so good. <laughs> He's fly Santa. Yeah, man. Oh. Hey, is this a photo of you and me after our first win? Yeah. Thanks, Aww. buddy. I appreciate it. Look at that. Ted, thank you for everything you've done for me, Nathan. Oh. Uh, Jane and I are going to a pagan Christmas ritual at Stonehenge. That sounds amazing. I. It's so weird. It's so cool. Yeah. Oh, I want to go to a pagan ritual at Stonehenge. One hundred thousand subscribers. We'll go. Do it. <laughs> Stonehenge. If you want. Oh, okay, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. If I have an option here, then there are other world wonders <laughs> that are slightly above Stonehenge. Just a few. Fair enough. You're talking about sexy Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to a Christmas party at a friend's house. What friend's that? First and last name, please. Elton John. Oh. oh. Holy shit. <laughs> Hold me closer, tiny dancer, prancer, and vixen. <laughs> 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 It's so well written. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, that was terrible. He wants us to open presents and spend all day together on FaceTime. Oh it's gonna be a lovely afternoon of Yuletide cheer and two that dimensions. Is, that is super sad and depressing. I mean, it's effort, an A for effort, but that is super sad and depressing. Yeah. 
Did you not buy a secret Santa gift? I didn't know I had to. The email said secret Santa. They want to ruin the surprise, do they? This is what a himbo is. Just so we're clear, this is what a himbo is. It's like the definition right there. Oh my god, it's beautiful. <laughs> what a moron. Jamie. <laughs> god bless me. Everyone. I'm sorry, did he say God bless me? Everyone. <laughs> he's still him. He's still so iconic. He had some growth in the last episode, but he's still him. Yeah. Yeah. He's still Jamie. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Yep. It's a Christmas themed intro. Oh. Oh, that's too cute. Yeah. Oh. The leg lamp! Oh my god. Iconic. Holy fucking shit, you look incredible. <laughs> Aww. <gasps> Cindy Clawford. Oh my god. And she looks like... She looks like cat Cindy Clawford. I can't say Cindy Crawford anymore. It's Cindy Clawford in my head now. In my head. Back home in Lagos, we have good friends who celebrate. And they always eat jollof rice and goat meat. So I made you some. Oh. But I use chicken. Thank god. <laughs> <laughs> It was so cool what you've done with that Dubai Air logo. Fuck those guys. <laughs> yes. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying. They're trying. It's yeah. positive. It's awkward, but they're trying. Very appropriate, though. It's not... Even this show, not everything's perfect. Yeah, It's no. still gonna be like, oh, oh. right. Um, what, what's the appropriate thing to say here? We're just gonna try. We're just gonna do our best. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Anna, careful. The baseboards. Oh, Oh, that's a sad and lonely Christmas for poor Ted. Oh. Mm. You Aww. can't hear it, but they're using really good, like, they Christmas are. carols. They are. God, it's making me want Christmas now. What have you got to be sad about? Did one of the Paw Patrol dogs die? <gasps> Why would you put that out into the universe? No! I also love that on Christmas he's still wearing all black. It's Roy it's, Kent. It's, 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 yep. Problems, they're like mushrooms, yeah? The longer you leave them in the dark, the bigger they get. That is like ridiculously apt and descriptive. How <laughs> incredible. I'm gonna use that for now. Where's your mushroom? What's your mushroom? I'm gonna freak people out with it. I like it. And then when they lie, you say Oklahoma. Oh, because you gotta tell the God's honest truth. Yep. She told everyone my brother's rancid. Right, where does Bernard live? <laughs> Oh, oh, oh my god. Oi! She feels bad enough. I'm so sorry, I really tried. It cannot be that bad. Oh my god, it's that bad. I've spent the last 20 years in locker rooms with men. I promise you I've smelled worse. <laughs> Apt. Oh, he's trying. Look at him try. Look at him try. Look at him try. Oh god. I think you might be dead. Oh my god. What? <laughs> Listen, that is not like I forgot to brush my teeth bad. Or like I ate onions bad. <laughs> That's actually medically bad, which means it's not your fault. Healy always knows the right thing to say. I mean, it's true. Yeah, 100% true. And it's true. If you have like really, really bad breath, there's something medically wrong with your mouth. You yeah. should see a doctor or a dentist immediately. Yeah. Take care of yourselves, guys. We care about you. So you should care about you. We're going to my stupid posh neighborhoods and we're going to start knocking on doors. And if we don't find a dentist in 10 houses, you each get a thousand pounds. That sounds like a fantastic Christmas. Yep. I love that. Yep. Oh well, my it's God. A, it's a great way to make Phoebe feel better too, because it's not like, well, this is terrible and it's ruining Christmas and, and just be miserable. It's, no. we're going to get this fixed, but we're going to make it fun because you might get money out of it. Challenge! Yep, because it's not like she's already gotten over a thousand pounds from him and swear money. Oh my God, this child is going to be rich. <laughs> she's a smart kid. It's the whole world split up into 24 different time zones. You see, Santa's true power is not his speed, but his endurance. Wow. That's so sweet. It's so cute and so thoughtful and so charming and so sweet. I'm just, I lost a few seconds thinking. So in New York City, every winter, they do a Santa Claus festival mm -hmm. where like there are thousands of Santas oh, dressed God. up across the Santa city. SantaCon. SantaCon. Yep. Yeah. 
The concept of Santa having endurance has new meaning to Santa Claus <laughs> now. Love it. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also just Sam. He's just that sweet. He's just, he's, yeah. He's a cinnamon roll. If you're going to perpetuate the myth, there's some logic. You like pseudoscience. That's that's the pseudoscience of Santa. That was Cirque du Soleil Bendy right there. <laughs> thank I like you. the gymnastics you thank did you, for that thank one. Thank you, thank cool. you, thank you. Hey, I brought fried chicken. Ah, is that a Christmas tradition in Holland? No. Oh. <laughs> Just cause it's fried chicken. I mean, always a good idea. Oh god. Oh god. Just watching It's a Wonderful Life. Oh god, it and is. And drinking. Not. Oh, that's a bad combination. Oh, it's not a wonderful movie though. It was a great movie. Well, it's a classic movie. Actually, did you know that It's a Wonderful Life bombed when it first came out? Yes, because it's a bad movie. Well, the reason it has become a holiday classic was because it was so bad and it did so badly at the box office, it was cheap to air. It was so it was like the cheapest option for cable channels to oh, air at Christmas because so the rights to play it, it were so cheap and so it would run constantly and it wound up becoming a Christmas classic because it was always on. Mm. Literally because it was cheap to air. You hear that? You hear that? Why cool. It's a Wonderful Life is a Christmas classic. Mm -hmm. Oh, It's a reference to last season when they did High Boss on the field. Oh! Oh! Yep. Oh, this is so cute! Yep. Oh! Embarrassing is me in so much ice cream at a birthday party, knowing I'm no good with dairy, that I pooped my pants on the bus. That is embarrassing. When is your story? Three weeks ago. Oh my god! <laughs> That will make the child laugh, yes. Oh my god. That's a good way to make her feel better. You pooped your pants. Roy, Ken? Yeah, so? I did too sometimes. Well, let's both try and knock that off, shall we? If you can do it, I can do it. Cool? Cool. That's just so cool. That's that was just, so... just He's so cool. Yep. He's so cool. Yep. That was so cool. <laughs> Oh, he's so handsome and cool and chic. He's the grump that's good with kids and is just sweet and you're just like, oh, uh, might be the perfect man. Might be. Might is. be. <laughs> tell my incredibly beautiful wife I love her. I'm not going to do that because you're going to tell her yourself. Then you're going to hook up with an identically beautiful twin sister. Good luck. It's a whole thing. Yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, no! <laughs> uh, it's so violent but adorable. We did have a Christmas Nerf battle once. Really? Yep. We were finding Nerf bullets for like two years afterward. Wow. Yeah, they were everywhere. Wow. Yeah. This is very familiar to me. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Why did you bring a date to the team Christmas party? The French believe that having a beautiful woman around is always a good thing. An excellent point. All the explanation you need. That was not true with the Helter Skelter murders. Who is this man? Who is this Dutchman? I need to know more. He's so blunt and so dark. And so mean, but somehow very folksy. It's kind of perfect, though. It's it's a perfect flavor to add to Ted Lasso because this is just a sort of genuinely joyful yes. show. And so to have that just random dry drop, drop, yep, it's a great little bit of flavor. Well, you see, what happened was Rudolph's nose shined so brightly that it rendered me unable to see, and I was I was uh, delirious for several minutes, and I ended up putting this. <laughs> it's so Ted. He's just so. Oaksy. <laughs> so Midwestern. It's adorable. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Aww. On to the next. My face hurts right now. I'm just smiling so much. It's a nice thing. Yeah. It's a nice thing. It's a, it's a recurring thing with Ted Lasso. It's a great montage of cutting back and forth. The different reasons they're knocking on doors. It's a great way to blend all the stories. If we find out why your breath is so rancid, or we get a thousand pounds each. That's like a month's worth of swear words. Only a month. Only a month. This girl makes over 12 grand a year on her uncle's swearing. That's give or take 35 swear words a day that she, heard, uh -huh. that she hears, and that's if she sees them every day. Yeah. Wow. 
That's a lot of swear words. Good on her for keeping track. That is a business-minded young woman right there. Yeah, man. Probably reads Football Financial Quarter. <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> You're such a nerd. It had to be done. It had to be done. I'm sorry. Actually, no, I'm not sorry. Are you a dentist? Yeah. Can we come in? <laughs> Thank you so much. This will only take a second. Oh, my God. The house is lovely. <laughs> it's a good thing he's famous, or that would have been... Way more awkward of than course. it already was. Uh, but it's because he's famous that he can do that. Exactly. Oh my god. I'm so sad I'm gonna have to cut out all of this Christmas music. It's making me want Christmas. I love Christmas. Oh, you're one of those people. I love Christmas. Oh god. I will not be shamed. I will not apologize for my love of Christmas. I'm not asking you to apologize. I was quoting David Rose. Oh. Oh, I will not feel shame for the mall pretzels. There it is. See? Shit's Creek! No one is going to make you get rid of Dauphine, okay? Because that would be an insane thing for your uncle, and who is not a monster to suggest. He, it's on, I just noticed this, um, earlier on his outer coat, he had a little pom-pom thing, mm -hmm. and it's the same one that Keely and Phoebe both have in their hair. Yeah! Yep. They match. They match. I'm sure Dr. Rogers has another solution because she's nice and smart and science is real and it's Christmas, right? I also love that Phoebe's hair is done like Keely's. Yeah. Like she's wearing the same high pony. Yeah. Yo, can I get an Aussie? Fine. <gasps> Not with you, mate. With Keely. He keeps coming back. Oh my God, it's Aussie. It's Aussie. Ah, oh, this is great. <laughs> but Keely Jones was a seminal figure throughout my teenage years. Yeah, say that to her boyfriend. How about this? Why don't we all take a picture together? By the tree. Wicked. <laughs> She's such a good yeah. Roy Wrangler. Yep. Uh, <laughs> with both me. Original. Ah, uh, and he actually made the real one. Yep. Ah. Uh, the surfboard. Ah. Uh, oh. And the pool table. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Improvise, adapt, overcome. Oh. Uh, I know all too well how stunningly shitty the first Christmas after you get divorced can be. I just wanted to make sure you're okay. It's so nice. Mm -hmm. They're such good friends. It's yeah. so sweet. A lot better than I would have been if I just drank whiskey all day and watched It's a Wonderful Life on repeat. Oh, God. That could have gone dark. Yes. Oh, God. It started out dark. Would have just gone darker. Yeah. You got any other ideas, though? You'll see. Oh. Oh, you want me to drive? The steering wheel's on this side. Right, I'm gonna want the accent here. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Because we all do have <laughs> accents, even if we think we don't. Everyone has an accent. To everyone else, you don't get to say anything. I remain right, she remains wrong. Oh my god. Oh, true. Shame. I'm sorry, Phoebe. That's sweet. And cute. Yeah. And accurate. And that's exactly how you handle it. Yeah. I mean, maybe not with that particular method because it's overplayed and drawn out, but still, it's important. Romantic comedies are a recurring theme on this show, particularly in the second season. I won't spoil the specifics going forward, but keep your eyes out because there are some subtle Re and not so subtle romantic comedy references in this show. Oh, yay. More references. <laughs> I just want to thank you all for coming. To the family Higgins! Yay! Family Higgins. To the family we're born with, and to the family we make along the way, and most importantly, to Richmond! To Richmond! <laughs> they have to make her sing at every available opportunity. <laughs> oh my god. This is so sweet and has such good holiday vibes. Higgins brings out his cello. I'm getting a little ill. <laughs> oh, it's too much family feel for me. Oh, <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> okay. Sam's done. I'm done. <laughs> I am done, done. God. I'm not kidding. My face hurts from smiling right now. Like, my cheekbones are in pain. Oh, <sighs> Is it sharpening them? See, that's not how that works. Sadly. <laughs> I want some Maleficent cheekbones here. Not even those were real. <laughs> God. We're both getting delirious from hunger, so this might be an interesting discussion and outro. We'll see. Jesus. <laughs> so this was Carol of the Bells, the first Ted Lasso Christmas episode that we've gotten. Thoughts, feelings, emotions? 
I mean, I, as a general rule, don't like all that holiday feel-goody nonsense. This was and cute. I'm the one that doesn't have a soul. I, look, look. You can have a dark, hateful soul. Mm. Just so we're clear. Just so we're clear. But this was cute. This was nice. This, this is a filler episode. Yeah. This is a filler episode. It's feel good. It does not further the plot in any way. Mm -hmm. It just shows you little moments about the people that you already know and you mm -hmm. already love. And you just, you get to feel nice. Yeah. And particularly in this case, this is a holiday feel nice yeah. filler. Which so. suits the show. And so the beauty of it is Ted Lasso is in its second season. Yes. At this point. And it's established itself already as an excellent show with very tight writing. It has yes. no unnecessary bits it everything it does is purposeful and mm -hmm. so when you establish yourself like that and mm -hmm. when you are successful like that you kind of have the flexibility to play around a little bit yes and so you get to do fun episodes like this that maybe aren't necessarily that maybe aren't as plot necessary yeah. but you have the space because people love it you have yeah. the space to play around a little bit and so this is one of the few times we're not upset about a filler episode no. because it's Wonderful. Well, and like all other, like every other episode, it has been well written, mm -hmm. and there that is makes a, a huge difference. There is there are there is good filler, and then there is bad filler. Just there's filler, and then there's fluff. It's like dessert, right? You can get really good dessert, and then you can get really bad dessert. It's all <laughs> sugar. Yep. But there's a very distinct difference between good and bad. Yeah, and if you're gonna do it, do it well. I Always. Mean, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, but it was a great, great, fun episode. It was perfectly in character. It was a joy to watch. The one person we didn't see in this episode was Jamie, though. And that is because he's from Manchester. In theory, he'd be able to go home. He'd, uh -huh. he'd be a lot closer. Or we have also, as much as he's grown, he's never actually been the one to really partake in the festivities. Some, you could speculate one way or the other that we assume he maybe went home to his family yeah. or that he... Maybe as much growth as he's had, maybe didn't feel comfortable yeah. quite yet going to a team thing, but he's the one person we didn't see. And take that however it is. Probably off with his own family having a miserable Christmas. Yeah. Um, oh, well. Unfortunately. And this was all about joyful Christmases. But yeah, th there's really not too much to discuss here. It's just a fun, light, wonderful, enjoyable episode. And now I want Christmas. It's the third time in half an hour you've demanded having Christmas. Because I love Christmas. Uh, and I love English supermodels. But do you see any of those hanging around here in the future? No. You're such a bitch. Oh. <laughs> Your words hurt me. I know. Deeply. Okay, we're gonna wrap this up here because we're actually we're hangry. Like we're hangry right now. Oh, that's that. That's, that's what this yeah, feeling is. Yeah. I was like, you're being a little more bitchy than normal. That's what this feeling is. Yeah. I haven't eaten okay. today. Yeah. We're, we're both hangry. So we're going to wrap this up before any more abuse happens. Well, as always, if you enjoyed this episode and if you love Christmas as much as I do, don't forget to like, leave us a comment. And speaking of Christmas, redder is better. So don't forget to subscribe, hit the big red button, and we will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.